Nearly 1 million people per month around the globe search the term Shalazian on Google and the world's second largest search engine, YouTube. Isn't that number amazing? That's why I've made about 10 videos about styes and hordeolums and Shalazians on this channel, but we're gonna do it again and I'm gonna address all the top questions about Shalazian and that's what we're gonna accomplish on today's iSchool. back to iSchool with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Make sure to give a little love tap on that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. You're here because you're searching for information on a Shalazian or a Psy, and a Shalazium is a bump on your eyelid. It's sometimes called an eyelid cyst or meibomian cyst, and it slowly forms when an oil gland called a meibomian gland becomes blocked. At first, the Shalazium may be painful, but after a little time, it usually doesn't hurt. A Shalazian usually forms on the upper eyelids, but it can form on the lower eyelids definitely as well. Ordinarily, Shalazia, that's the plural of Shalazion, develops in adults between the ages of 30 and 50. 50. They're not as common in children, but they can definitely happen, especially if the kid kind of touches their eyelid with bacteria on their hands, which kids are want to do. So is a Shalazian a sty? So sty is the common term. A Shalazian is not really a sty, but it can form because of a hordeolum. So hordeolums or styes are bacterial infections that cause the gland to swell. They can be painful and red and irritated, but normally a Shalazian isn't painful. A Shalazian is what happens after the sty. It's the resulting inflammatory debris that your body was not able to get rid of. So why would a Shalazian form? They can develop when something blocks a small oil gland in the eyelid. Those glands are helping keep the eye moist. I made a whole video about my Bohemian glands. You can check out here. A blocked gland begins retaining that oil and it swells up. And eventually Eventually the fluid hopefully will drain and the infection will go away, but you may be left with a hard lump on your eyelid, which is just inflammatory debris that your body was not able to get rid of. You're more commonly gonna have Shalazians um, or infections in the gland with rosacea because ocular rosacea in particular causes clogging of the meibomian glands, altered meibomian gland secretion, and you're more at risk for Shalazians and styes. Also, if you have chronic blepharitis, eyelid inflammation, so bleph is chronic eyelid inflammation, redness, swelling, irritation, and you can even have like dead skin cells that accumulate on your eyelashes with blepharitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is red, dry, flaky, and itchy skin. Other conditions like tuberculosis infections and viral infections can also put you at higher risk for having Shalazian. When you have Shalazian, the symptoms can include a painless bump on your eyelid, usually on the upper lid. You can have some mild irritation causing your eyes to water. You can have blurred vision from a larger Shalazian that is actually pushed on the eyeball and inducing a little bit of corneal astigmatism. How is a Shalazian diagnosed? So you'll usually see an eye specialist when you have one. You might see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. Both can diagnose and treat Shalazia. And these healthcare providers can examine it and offer treatment options. When you see your eye specialist, you should expect them to take a health history and make sure to give your complete health history because actually you wouldn't realize it, but your skin conditions like eczema and rosacea can definitely give underlying clues or, or can be the underlying cause of your Shalazia and your provider needs to know about that. Your doctor will do an external eye exam examining your eye, eyelid, eyelashes, and your skin texture. They'll look at that eyelid, maybe even flipping it over, but they'll be using a bright light and using magnification that we call a slit lamp to look at the base of your lashes. We also look at your oil gland openings just to see if you have any clogged glands, if you know we can see actual oil at the base of the gland. How do you get rid of a Shalazian and can you pop it? In a lot of cases, you can actually get a Shalazian to go down at home. Most of them go down in a month or less or go away in a month or so. You never want to try to pop it though or push on it. You can actually injure your eye or your eyelid, kind of hurt yourself by doing that. So instead for home treatment, you want to try warm compresses. So ideally, if you have 
one that you can heat in the microwave, that's really the best way to do it. You can do a warm washcloth with water, but it's really not gonna hold heat long enough to give you the heat you need to clear the chalazia. So I would definitely recommend like a brooder mask or a mask like that that you can heat in the microwave and put on your eyelid. So I also get a lot of questions though about, hey, I don't have a microwave or what is an alternative? Can I use a USB powered warm compress? The thing about a USB powered is you really don't have the moist heat that you even do with a brooder mask. So if you kind of think about the difference between dry heat and moist heat, you know, you can put your hand in an oven that's at a high degree and not be burned. That's dry heat. But you certainly could not put your hand in boiling water. So there's definitely a difference for me between moist heat and dry heat. And so brooder masks are definitely preferred. But if you don't have one or don't have a microwave, you can definitely apply some heat using a USB mask. You also want to massage the eyelid. So once you get that heat on there and that oil is loosened up, you wanna gently massage the eyelid a few times a day. Massaging for a few minutes each day, use kind of a light to medium pressure on your eyelid and you want to always go down and out on the upper lid up and out on the lower lid because you're trying to get that oil to flow out of the gland. It's really not productive to like massage like this or massage upward because that's moving the oil the wrong way, right? We want that oil to come out of that blocked gland instead of going further up in it. Now is a good time for a commercial break with one of my partners, Bob and Brad. I'm Dr. D, host of iSchool with Dr. D and owner of a private optometry practice with a special interest in dry eye. Many of my patients suffer from dry, tired eyes and are looking for ways to relieve that strain at the end of the day. There's so many options for warm compresses, but the Bob and Brad Smart Eye Massager with heat and vibration has an added benefit of stimulating the pressure points around the eyes to improve blood circulation. There's built-in heating pads that provide a comfortable temperature between 40 and 42 degrees Celsius, which is ideal for eye strain relief and dry eye because 40 to 42 Celsius is an appropriate temperature range for heating the meibomian glands and having effective heat on the glands. Wear it for just 15 minutes before going to bed every night and you'll feel completely relaxed, enjoying a more restful sleep. I have to admit, when I received this mask, I was skeptical of those claims, but then my own husband stole it from me and uses it regularly to calm down before sleep. Whether you're using it for dry eye or relaxation, the Bob and Brad Massager is a great option for eye heat and massage. Check out my description for more info on heat and massage devices. My next tip for you is practicing good hygiene. So when you have a Shalazian, do not wear eye makeup. And after the Shalazian drains, make sure to keep the area clean. And honestly, before it drains for that matter as well. While you have a bump on your eyelid, you should be cleansing the eyelid with an Optase wipe, an OcuSoft wipe, something eye doctor approved. It can be We Love Eyes, Hydrate brand. There's lots of really good ones, honestly. So follow good eye health practices and avoid touching your eyes. Make sure that area is cleansed, use lots of heat and massage. If you don't treat a Shalazian, what's gonna happen? Well, if it doesn't go away, you can seek help from your eye specialist. You might need to have the fluid drain through a small incision, or you could need a steroid injection to reduce the swelling and inflammation. And more recently, in my clinic, I really favor using IPL or intense pulse light. I made a whole video about it here, but check that out as well. If you have an eye care provider that has intense pulse light or low level light therapy, that's a really great way to get rid of a Shalazian without injecting or cutting or potentially harming other meibomian glands. And if you have made it this far and you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that button and the bell so that you don't miss any notifications. That is it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed.